We have two days of inspiring speakers at Singularity University here in Amsterdam. And it was kicked off, one of the kickoff speakers was Nicolaan Haan. And he talked about the global challenges and, of course, how we can use exponential technologies. So I want to zoom into a couple of specific challenges. And that is mobility. I mean, if you basically see the exponential technologies uh, in, the, in the area of cars, self-driving cars, robotics, etc. Well, how fast do you see that uh, developing? And wh what, can we, uh, what can we gain with it? Mm. Well, uh, for one, the electrification of, of our car industry is going to be a huge contributor to solving our global climate change. There's a direct link. Getting ourselves off of fossil fuels, getting ourselves on electric vehicles, and having renewable sources of that energy through solar energy. Okay, That's now you talk about the Dutch, okay? We have 100,000 cars here. We have everybody. We have charging poles. We're a little bit ahead, you know, just like California. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the world, it's nowhere to be found. Where are you from? I'm from California. Yeah. So in California, you have an example. In the rest of the world, it's nowhere. I mean, how fast do you see that developing? I think it'll develop very quickly. As yeah. soon as there's a, a, a price uh, opportunity for that, um, the, think the situation will change very rapidly. One of the challenges, so I live part of my life in East Africa. I still live there four months out of the year, and I've lived there for like 25 years. Um, I oftentimes do a thought experiment for myself. How long will it take for driverless cars to be there? And... There's a number of, um, of roadblocks, if you will, metaphorically, uh, as particularly with mapping of roads and the consistency of roads. Charging which, infrastructure? Well, charging infrastructure was a challenge for California. It is a challenge. I have an EV myself, and it's a challenge for me to, to find places to charge my car. Which one? A uh, Chevy Volt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a test. Pretty good. No, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. No. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit out of my price range yeah, for yeah, now, yeah. but it'll come. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, with this exponential technology, it happens fast. And I think EV, the transition to EV and driverless cars will also happen fast. Now, maybe uh, cities like Nairobi and other capital cities in Africa and, and other parts of, of low-income countries in the world, maybe they will adapt very quickly. I think they will. Yeah. The rural hinterlands, I think it'll be more of a challenge. Um, but I, I imagine that this will be a rapid uptake. Okay. And what do you mean about rapid? When will it be, you know, like 10% of the total amount of cars driving around? In the entire planet? It's only 10% of the total cars? Well, if you have 10%, it's very easy to get to 50%. The first 10% is the hardest. Yeah, yeah. I, within a decade. Okay. I think it'll happen within a decade. We're getting ready for a boom in the United States. And again, once people... For example, my Chevy Volt, mm -hmm. when I compare the price of, op of operating that versus yeah. the price of operating a fossil fuel engine with all the moving parts and everything, there's no comparison. So people will want and desire EVs for mobility very rapidly, leave alone if they have like an ethical consideration of climate change. To even take that out of the equation. Yeah, because nobody will do it because of that reason. Unfortunately so not. No. Unfortunately but not. But it will be just because it's cheaper and easier and nicer and more luxurious. So what needs to happen before, you know, this whole electrification of the society and speci specifically cars? What, what kind of invention or what kind of technology do you see becoming exponentially cheaper? Well, yeah, clearly the, the, the effectiveness, the, the, um, the, the duration of a battery charge, uh, the power of a battery charge is all following the exponential curves. Mm -hmm. So that'll clearly be there. Um, charging stations and having wireless charging, I think it's going to be a big game changer. Mm -hmm. And right now we're not quite there yet. When I have my EV, I have to find a station, I have to plug something in, and that's yeah. still a hassle, yes. right? But what happens if when I'm driving down the road, it's charging? That will happen soon. Soon, like within five years, depends on where you are. Yeah, in Holland, in or in California. I, in, I definitely, definitely. Um, and then once we prove the technology in places like Holland and California, as long as we mentioned before, as long as it becomes a price advantage and a convenience advantage for people, they'll convert. They'll convert because they want yeah. to. It's not because of environment. And, and you see the price of batteries going down exponentially. So in 10 years, there will be a fraction of the price which there are now, and electric cars will be the cheapest uh, on the planet. Well, yes, but there's another dimension of what's going on here, and that is right now we're used to every family or individual having a car. Mm -hmm. That's going to change. Right? We have the Ubers out there. We have the whole notion of, of car ownership is going to change. and We don't necessarily have to own our car. Mm -hmm. So, especially when they become autonomous, especially when they become autonomous, and even if they're not autonomous, 
Uber is already doing that. So, so people are making a conscious choice to not have a, not buy a vehicle and pay all the maintenance costs and the insurance costs and you name it, mm -hmm. um, and rather just use the services already provided. Now, right now with human drivers, it makes Uber a little bit more uh, too expensive to really do that for most people, but it is going to go autonomous soon. Especially with autonomous. And what about electrification? Uh, how cheap will be electric uh, energy be much cheaper than gasoline? How fast will that go with solar energy and batteries and, and that kind of stuff? Well, already, uh, already we've, we, and this is without pricing in the environmental costs of fossil fuels. So let me be very clear about that. Even without pricing that in, we've reached a crossover point in the United States where electric energy, solar energy is cheaper than coal and, and gas energy. Mm. So really? in America, in certain parts? Yes, yes. And that's without costing in the environmental impacts of fossil fuels. You put, put those costs in there and take out the subsidies that we provide to the oil and gas industry, and it makes solar much more uh, viable. And it's following a downward exponential trend. Material science um, in solar energy is, is following a, a, an exponential downward trend. And it's not just solar. It's wind. It's wave energy. It's algae. algae. Um, so lots of other forms of, of renewable energy that doesn't burn fossil fuels are coming online. And that is following an exponential trend. Again, ten, over 10 years, if now 85% 80, of the total energy is, uh, is, is, is fossil fuels, where will we be in 10 years, 2025? Oh, it's very hard to make these predictions. That's why I, ha I asked the hard question. Much easier to ask the hard questions than to give the but real the, good answer. But the trend is there. Yeah, but uh, will it take 100 years or will it take a ten, 10 years? No, that's a big difference. Yeah, it's not going to take 100 years. I mean, we're, we're talking 10 to 20 years for a dramatic transformation in our, in our, electric, uh, our energy systems mm -hmm. and our, our mobility systems. Call it 10 to 20 years. And if companies are not preparing themselves for that, then they're going to be disrupted. This is going to benefit the consumer. Okay, life is good. We're all going to basically drive uh, autonomous driving vehicles and electrification in the next 10 to 20 years. Nicolas, thank you. Sure.